Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's stand to our feet and give God some praise here today. Amen. We've come to magnify the name of Jesus. He is worthy of all the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's step out and begin to give God a praise that he is worthy of. I've come to give him my all, everything that I can give. I'm thankful for his breath that's in my lungs. Amen. As this praise team begins to play, why don't we step out and come to the front and begin to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. No. 
Take a moment to lift up the name of Jesus in this house. We've come to give him praise today. Hallelujah. 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 I said we've come to lift up the name of Jesus. I wish somebody would take the next few seconds just to give him praise. Amen. Don't ask him for anything. Don't say, Jesus, I need you to do this. But just say, God, I'm here to praise you. I'm here to lift up your holy name. For you alone are worthy. There is no one like you. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. It's easy to come to church and all we do is say, Jesus, give me. Jesus, I need. Jesus, touch my body. Touch my finances. Amen. And I'm thankful we serve a God that's willing to do all of those things. Amen. Amen. We can clap our hands about it because he's still a miracle working God. Thank you, Jesus. But we should also enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. We should come and say, Lord, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just praising you for who you are. Not because what you have done or are going to do for me today, but just because you're a good God. Amen? Can anybody just praise him without an agenda, without a need? Amen. Amen. I hear the sound of an army arising. You can feel that here today. The people of God come together lifting up the name of Jesus. There's power behind that. Do you know all of hell is trembling right now? Because the people of God, we're here worshiping together. We're pulling out the sword of the Spirit. We're saying, you know what? It may have been a hard week, but I'm an overcomer. Sometimes you got to get around a brother or sister. And that iron sharpens iron and you're reminded, hey, I can do this thing. I am an overcomer. I can make it. Amen. You are in the army of God. You're not a loser. Amen. You're not a failure. The enemy would like to make you think you're already losing. Why even try? You're already going to fail. Why even try? You know tomorrow's Monday. You're going to mess up. I'm here to shut the enemy up. Amen. You don't have to believe the lies that he's trying to tell you. It's time that we put on the full armor. It's time that we buckle up and say, hey, you know what? I don't have to fall. I can have tomorrow what I have today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the saints of God realize that we can go into Monday with the same anointing that we feel on Sunday, amen, there's a lot of things that will begin to change. Amen. The same sword that you're swinging right now, you just carry it in tomorrow. You just bring it into your workplace. You just bring it against the enemy that's trying to lie to you. And you say, you know what? The same anointing that was there yesterday, it's still here today. It's a new morning, but he's the same great God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. I'm thankful that when we come to church, we feel His Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's give Him one more hand clap of praise for He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. While we remain standing, I do want to go to the Lord in prayer. We have several that are sick. Uh, we have several that are in the hospital, but the Lord knows every need and every situation that we're bringing before Him. Amen? He is a miracle working God. Let's remember the Shipman family. They're traveling today. Let's remember Sister Judy Reynolds. She had another mild heart attack, and she's in the hospital in Kingwood. Uh, we've been getting reports on that, so we're so uh, thankful that the Lord has kept his hand up of protection on her, but we're praying for healing. Amen. Complete healing of her heart and her body. Let's remember Brother De La Fuente. He uh, fell and broke his hip. He is in a... Uh, 
recovery center and we're lifting him up in our prayers sister de la fuente for strength for their family god knows that situation amen and he's handling it let's remember brother les rogers we're praying for healing for his body brother philip miller and his family for strength we're so thankful for the good reports that have been coming from that family amen we love them sister miller also has called and asked for special re uh, prayer requests for one of her friends today i believe they were, they were in a car accident as well and they were expecting a child so god knows that situation and we're lifting that up in prayer god's going to move on that behalf amen uh, let's remember alexis moore uh, this is a young girl that's connected with some of us at some of sister padalano's family uh, connected through her daughter she has got cancer and she's my age very young 30 years old and we know that god is going to touch her body amen we're just believing for a special miracle for that family for healing for a blessing in their finances god knows amen let's also remember sister linda anderson not feeling well today we're asking for healing for her body and if you have a special unspoken request let's make it known by the lifting of our hands and if you need prayer i want you to come to the front we're going to anoint you with oil and god's going to touch your situation in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see everything.
Hallelujah. Come on, it won't be much longer. I said it won't be much longer until that trumpet sounds and he splits the eastern sky. The dead in Christ shall rise and those of us that are alive and remain will join them in the clouds. I'm thankful. I said I'm thankful that one day we're going to fly away. Hallelujah. As this world gets darker and darker and people are worried and depressed and upset about what's going on, the church can look to the hills from which our help comes and we can say soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to encourage somebody to keep your faith today. Amen. Stand strong in the anointing that you've been blessed with. Amen. We've been washed in the blood and sanctified by the Spirit. Just a few more weary days. Some days it might seem really hard. Amen. I ain't going to sugarcoat it for you. There's going to be some trials that you're going to face, but hold on just a little bit longer because one day we're going to get our reward. Amen. And that's why we sing that song. Won't we have a time when we get over yonder? Won't we have a time when we get over yonder? I'm thankful that I'm going to a place where there's no more sickness and shame, that there's no more pain and sadness, that we're going to see Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. We got the victory. I've read the end of the book. You've got the victory today. Hallelujah. Come on. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Spirit, you ought to clap your hands. You ought to shout and wave your hands because you've got the victory. Woo. One day when we walk into heaven, we're going to look over and we're going to see the devil and we're going to say, that little imp is the one that gave me so much trouble. That's what I was worried about. And we're going to laugh him to scorn. We're going to say, but we made it. Yeah. Amen. Whatever you're facing today, it may look bad, but you can make it. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm thankful for that blessed assurance. Hallelujah. I've been out of church, Sister DeLauder. I backslid and I remember what it felt like to not have that assurance amen I remember what it was like to be laying in the bed and an airplane fly a little bit too low to the house and you hear that rumble and you think okay is this it am I gonna die today am I gonna am I gonna go to hell because I knew what I should have been doing but I wasn't amen I, I felt that before, that pain of uh, uh, I'm driving the car and you might hide your plane a little bit and go oh boy because something on the inside knows that you're not living the way that you should be living. But oh, what a peace that passes all understanding when you give your life to Jesus, when you're full of the Holy Ghost and things begin to happen in this world. But you can look at these trials in the face and you say, you know what? I've got Jesus on my side. And no matter what comes against me, I'm a blood-bought, born-again believer in Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that we have a testimony. I'm thankful that we have hope. Amen. We have hope where the world is looking for hope everywhere. In a bottle, in a needle, in Hollywood, in sports. They're looking for something. And they can't find something to fill that, that longing that they're searching for. The church has what they're looking for. There's a world out there that's waiting for somebody to say, Hey, will you come to church with me? They need what we have. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus, for what we have. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let us keep it all for ourselves. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to quickly go over the announcements. March the 9th. Lamps of Fire will be meeting in the Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. We're so thankful for our elders. Amen. Why don't we give all of our elders a great big hand? Thank you, brother and sister Turner, for helping with our elders group. We love them. March the 16th, that's a Saturday at 9 a.m., men's work day at the church. We're, we're asking for all men, if you can be here at that time, 
We're going to be doing some work, much needed maintenance on the church, working on the sidewalks, pressure washing, painting stuff, making the house of God look good. We have Resurrection Sunday that's coming soon, and we're going to pack this place out with people that are hungry for truth, hungry for the word of the Lord, and we want everything to be in tip-top shape, and we're so thankful for all of our volunteers. Why don't we give everybody a hand that you serve the kingdom of God? Amen. That will also be a day that food will be provided. Thank you, Brother Darbone. He's going to be providing food. I think he's going to be uh, barbecuing or grilling or something. So we're looking forward to that. All the men getting up here. It doesn't just have to be work. I'm thankful that we get to fellowship while we're up here. Cut up and laugh. Amen. Amen. We get up here and we have such a great time laughing, cutting up, having fun. And I'm thankful for our men and I'm thankful for our church. Amen. At this time, if I could get our ushers to come, we're going to receive the offering. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that you bless this offering, that you bless each and every one that can give as well as those that cannot. We're thankful for the opportunity to give to your kingdom. We're thankful for what you've done here today so far and for your word that's about to go forth. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. You can bring your tithe and offering to the front. May the Lord bless you. excited about going to heaven. How about you? Yeah, I'm excited about going to heaven. Come on, somebody don't seem too excited. I say I'm excited about making it. Is, is anybody out there ready to go to heaven? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I praise God for one more day. One more day. Praise the Lord. How many of you fellas ever played football? Raise your hand. Okay, I see. Just like about every man in here has played football or basketball. Amen. And, and when you're a coach and you got hurt, and, uh, and you got hurt, I know you did. If you played football, you got hurt. And hurt back, knee, whatever. Bruises, smacked upside the head. Amen. Did you sit down and cry in front of all them men? No, what'd you do? <clears throat> you got up. You was hurting, but you got on up anyway, and you went out there and, and you did what you had to do. Your coach said, get out there and stick them. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Did you get mad at your coach? All right, coach, yeah, I'll eat it. I'll do everything, whatever I got to do, I'll do it. <clears throat> I'm not a pillow preacher. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tell it like it is. Amen. I hope if you'll allow this preacher to preach the way a coach might tell you something on a football game. I'm not in it for a game. I'm getting in it for reality today. Come on, I might stick it to you today, but I'm going to do it in love. And then again, I might not. I just thought I'd throw that in. Praise God. 
What I'm saying is, don't get mad at a preacher that's trying to help you. Because I'm liable to say some things in this message today. You might get a little upset, but how many are going to say, come on, preacher, preach it? I don't know where people got this idea that preachers are weak and lily-livered. Hey, I'll take on the best man. Amen. I'll hurt you good, I promise you. Amen. But I'm not going to do that because I got the love of God on the inside of me. I left that old life behind me. And today I'm going to preach what God has put into my heart. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost already. It's coming in here. The power of God is going to change some lives today. Somebody's about to get the Holy Ghost. Somebody's about to be changed in this house. Ooh, you know why? Because I know my God. Amen. God is up to something today. Amen. I say God is ready for us to have a service like we have never had a service. Woo! How many of you are ready for a service like you have never had in your life? That's the kind of God we serve today. I'm going to ask every man, every woman, every child, a young person to get behind me today and preach the word. Are you going to get with me? Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn with me to 1 Chronicles 16, 23 through 34. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great, everybody say great, great. is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. For he also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Given to the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Given to the Lord glory and strength. Given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Verse 30. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Verse 31. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the woods sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Psalms 48 1. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Psalms 145 and 3. Great is the Lord. Somebody shout, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Amen. Today, just for a few moments, I want to preach. A great God deserves great praise. I say a great God deserves great praise. Come on, clap your hands to our great God today. <laughs> praise the name of Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. My first prayer and probably yours, I learned as a child was, God is great God is good. Let us thank him for our food. Everybody remember that one? Praise the Lord. Well, God is great, and that means that he is beyond ordinary. His greatness cannot be comprehended, for it is unsearchable. Who can conceive or express how great God is? Amen. How great he really is. Praise the Lord. It's been said, amen, when we cannot by searching find the bottom, that we must sit down at the brink and adore the depth. Our God today is so deep and he is so wide that it will take all of eternity, amen, for you to get to know him. As a 12-year-old child, you've heard my story, and I received the Holy Ghost. You know where I came from, but for some of you, maybe you don't know. Amen. I'm just going to, in a nutshell, tell it. I came from a home with an adulterating, alcoholic 
dad. I had two step dads. I had three step mothers and one step witch. Amen. I mean, she was a real spell casting, ward on the nose, crystal ball gazing nut. She was a witch. Went to, cert, went to school in New Orleans to, to become a certified witch. And I'm saying, I'm being nice now. Some people come from dysfunctional families. I is one of them. Amen. Amen. But I'm not here to talk about family dynamics today. I'm talking about uh, uh, sin. Uh, my friend, sin will turn a family into the Adams family. Anybody ever seen the Adams family? Uh, sin uh, will turn a family uh, into the mafia. Uh, sin uh, will corrupt uh, and destroy uh, your best intentions uh, and leave you upside down, uh, inside out, uh, and turned upside around. Your world will go to hell in a handbasket real quick. Because, my friend, anything without God is a freak of nature. It's a perversion, amen, of nature. God didn't make you that way. So let me be clear right now and clear up a little bit of confusion perhaps you may have. Yes, you are a free moral agent, but you were not created by God to go through this life without Him. Living in a sinful state, you were created to worship God and to have a relationship with our God. Come on. I say your relationship has got to be everything. You'll come on. Praise Him right now. I wish somebody would stand to their feet right now and begin to give God some praise in this house. Come on, he's a great God. He deserves great praise. Woo, hallelujah. My friend, if you can just get into God's church and become truly committed to living for God, you will find that it's the best life. I say it's the best life. I say it's the best life that you will ever find living for God. Come on. Somebody's going to find the best life today. Well, I feel it today. Somebody's going to have the best life right now. You've been wanting it. You've been thinking about it. And it's going to be yours today. You're going to love him. You're going to trust him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hey, I've been to the other side. I tasted of what I thought was the greener grass, but I found out it was the septic tank. I found out it was horrible. I got the T-shirt. Come on. Let me also warn you. If you try to live any other way than this holy way, and you know I'm telling the truth, then my friend, you, you will place your life uh, in many upside down situations. Amen. Your heart will be pierced. Uh, amen. With flaming arrows. Uh, your conscience uh, will be so horrible. Uh, you won't sleep at night. Where brother, brother Coots up there? Uh, amen. You won't have a good night's rest. Uh, even the planes flying over your house uh, will scare you to death. Uh, uh, just driving down the road. Uh, oh, God, don't let him kill me. Uh, woo, I ain't ready. Don't come yet, Lord. You know I'm telling the truth. Any, come on, anybody ever felt that way? You know what I'm talking about. Look at the hands. Uh, Look at the hands. Oh, what a merciful God. Oh, what a mighty God. Amen. I advise you today in year 2024, my friend, we don't have a lot of time left. Amen. If you've ever going to live for God, you better step in the boat. You better jump in. You better get in real quick because our God's coming back soon. I say he's coming back real soon. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a double mind. I, I don't want a double mind. I used to be double-minded. I, I couldn't decide if I wanted to live for God or if I wanted to live for the devil. But finally, I made up my mind. I say I made up my mind. I'm going to heaven, and I'm going to take everybody with me that I can. Hey Amen. I had a rough time for a few years. As a boy, 
in an ungodly home, but I had godly grandparents. Amen. Say, thank God for grandparents. I had godly grandparents, and they were an anchor in my prayer and my home. Amen. They taught me how truly God really was. Amen. From sun up to sundown, I knew where I was at with my grandma and grandpa. Amen. They said blessing over the food. They were always thinking about God and talking about God. I could walk in my house. It was a total different world. Amen. And mom, if you're watching, you was a great mom. But it was an ungodly home. Amen. There was Ozzy Osbourne, they had Halen. Amen. Rock music. There was Journey. There was all kinds of crazy stuff. There was fighting and everything that was going on. I grew up in that. But when I wanted some peace, I said, Mom, I'm going down to my house. <laughs> Woo! And I, we had a regular trail uh, from my house down to my grandma's. Uh, and I would walk into that house, uh, and it was the happy good men singing or the Florida boys, uh, and the Holy Ghost was rocking in the house. Uh, and my grandma was shouting all over the place uh, and something going on in there. I say, I want what my mamma's got. I want what my papa's got. They got the Holy Ghost. They were an excellent example to me. And you know what? I made up my own little mind. My own little 12-year-old mind. Come on. I made up my mind that some grown men can't even make up their own mind. I say, I love a 12-year-old boy, and I made up my mind. I'm going to live for God. <laughs> Woo! That's bad when a 12-year-old child is more of a man than a man is, my God. Woo. Well, the coach is coming out in me today. My God. Men rather go deer hunting than take their children to church. Men rather be out on the lake. Come on, I feel, I feel uh, somebody's getting mad. Praise God. That's okay. Coach is going to help a little bit today. <laughs> Woo, my, my, my. My grandparents were excellent examples to me. They were always there, full of the Holy Ghost. They're always taking us to church, never forcing, but taking us anyway. Amen. I've had some storms in my life. Has anybody had a storm? Amen. I've had some storms. Amen. The boat has rocked. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I've held on. Amen. Even though it was surging. Praise the Lord. And I believe today that somebody is saying today, I'm making up my mind. Amen. I'm beginning to feel a little hope beginning to rise in the, ho in the house of the Lord today. I say I'm beginning to feel a little hope beginning to rise. Somebody's starting to say, you know I can live for God. If a 12-year-old punk can do it, I can do it. If they can do it, I can do it. I look around here today. Some of y'all been in church for 40 years. Brother Hart, stand up and give God praise. Just stand up right now. Look at that man. That's a good man. He's lived for God for 40-something, 50 years. And if he can do it, you can do it. Brother Bubba, wave your hands in the air. Woo! If that raw bone man can do it, he used to be a bunco buster. But look at him now. That's a real man. I say, that's a real man. Come on. Woo! That's a real man. Look at him. He ain't afraid to worship his God. Woo! I believe today that somebody's saying the day is the day that I finally get it right. I'm going to live for God for the rest of my life. Come on. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for my family. And most of all, I'm doing it for my God. Because my God has been so good to me, I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all what my God has done for me. He changed me. He picked me up. Here comes Coach DeLauder. Hallelujah. Put me in, Coach. Oh, you really want to be put in? Yeah, put me in. I'm doing it. Come on. Okay, here it comes. Men, 
Everybody say, if you're a man, stand up. If you're a man. Woo, come on. I, I, okay. All right. You're being real. Come on. You're a man, aren't you? Praise God. All right. You look like a big old man. Praise God. I'm saying that kind of careful, too. Praise the Lord. You're a big man. Amen. Go ahead and sit down now. Men, if you want the respect of being a leader in your home, and I don't know why, if you're a man, that you would not want it. Unless you've been Hollywooded. Woo, Lord, have mercy. Unless you've been emasculated. Oh, Lord, it's getting real. Unless you've been feminized. Come on. Amen. Have you feminized your own self in the world's eyes? Come on. And so if you are a man, and if you call yourself a man, then men, you need to do what God called you to do and take spiritual authority in your home. <laughs> Woo. Come on, you football players. Come on. Come on. Double dog dare you to worship today. Take a spiritual authority and protect your sweet, lovely wife. Oh, we got quiet. Somebody's wife must have made them mad this morning. Praise God. Take spiritual authority and love your sweet, darling wife. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Love your children. A little more. Yeah. A little more. Praise God. Woo. Love your God. Woo. Come on. Now, when I said God, everybody stood up. But God said to love your wife as he loves the church. And if you don't love your wife, you don't love your God. Come on, I'm telling you the truth if I've ever told you the truth. Woo! Somebody put vinegar in the pastor's oatmeal this morning or something. Amen. Lead your precious family. To the altar, men, lead your children to God. Lead your wife with love. Our great God is asking you seriously, how long will you halt between two opinions? You ever seen somebody that can't make up their mind? Amen. I, I hate a drive through Praise the Lord, ask my wife. We get in the biggest argument at the drive through Praise the Lord. We can have the best day, but when we pull up at the throttle, hurry, 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 hurry. Because, I, I, you know, they're over there. What do you want? Wah, 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 wah. I'm going, uh, just a minute. And my ADHD kicks in, and the OCD kicks in, and then the devil's over here, and Jesus saying, shut up and calm down. And my wife's getting mad. Amen. I drive up, and I don't even know what I want. I just say, just give me the, the number one combo. I, I, oh, I can't take it. Crazy. Somebody's got to have some relief. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? You know what I'm talking about. Pressure. 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 I'm glad Chick-fil-A's closed on Sundays. Amen. Praise God. Now you can, I don't know about you, but I believe somebody's going to pull their stuff out today. How many of you want some faith today? How many of you been struggling? How many of you been under pressure? How many of you tired of fighting this whole world every day, every stinking day? God's about to move into this house and he's about to change some things in your life right now. Are you ready for it? Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. I'm ready to pull myself up. I'm ready to change my wicked, doubtful ways. Come on. I like some action in my faith. Amen. I like some high octane faith. Amen. You go to Olive Garden and say, would you like some pepper in your salad? I like some pepper in my spiritual salad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3 says, now faith. Now you can say now faith. Or you can say now faith. Which one do you like the best? Amen. Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, I've had the Holy Ghost for many years now, and my God is greater in my life today than he was when I first met him. Amen. I love my wife more today than I did 38 calendar years ago. Praise God. Amen. A long time ago. Praise God. But I love her more today. Amen. She's sweeter today than she was back then. She's learned me. Amen. And I've learned her, or she's taught me. Praise God. But God was always great in my life. It took me some time to realize. Hey, I'm a little hard-headed at times. Amen. Repetition is the mother of learning. Men, don't ever stop coming to church. Keep coming to church. Ladies, keep coming to church. Young people, keep coming to church. Repetition is the mother of learning. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself. And so much more as you see the day approaching. Hallelujah. And after these many years, I still haven't even begun to find the depth of God's greatness. That's why you're not going to catch me laying out of church and prayer meetings if I can help it. I had to miss Thursday night. Amen. That's like the second or third time I've missed in 10 years of church. I had a medical procedure, and I hated missing church. Amen. You know why? Because I'm so hungry, and I'm so thirsty for Jesus Christ. I want more of Jesus. Does anybody want more of God? I want to go where I can get fed. Come on. Amen. Throughout the scripture, God is often identified as great. David said, great is the Lord. Deuteronomy 10 and 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. Jesus Christ, uh, let me tell you today, he isn't afraid of you. He isn't afraid of any human being, and you can't bribe him with any rewards. He is not a politician. You're not going to get a text saying, would you like to donate to heaven? Come on. He's a God of gods, and he's a Lord of lords. He is the great God. Woo, my God. Psalm 86 and 10 says, For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Amen. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Psalm 147 and 5 says, Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Amen. Charles Spurgeon, he wrote, How great Jehovah is essentially none can conceive. But we can all see that he is great in the deliverance of his people. Great in their esteem who are delivered. And great in the hearts of those enemies whom he scatters by their own fears. He is the great shepherd. He is a savior. And he is a great one. He is our great God and savior. Our great high priest. And his name shall be great unto the ends of of the earth. Isaiah 33 and 5 says, the Lord is exhausted. Exalted, not exhausted. Amen. He is exalted. I'm exhausted, but he's exalted. Amen. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. Today, Jesus Christ is the possessor of all great power. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that's got all power? Not just a little bit, but every bit of it. Every bit of it. He has all the power that there is. All power in heaven belongs to him. He is the God of gods. He is not a weak and feeble person. Amen. He is not a weak and feeble like the idols that's worshipped by other nations and people. He is the creator of all elements and things, things that we don't even understand and cannot even begin to understand. God is still blowing scientists' mind daily. 
There is so much knowledge that they cannot even fathom it. And some will readily admit it, even some atheists, that they don't understand a speck of all the knowledge of this earth. There is no simple, there is no such thing as a simple life. Even a one-celled amoeba, a one-celled organism, it's complex, amen, and our God created it. Much less will scientists tell you that they understand the vast universe and beyond it. My goodness, scientists still don't even understand how a fat little bumblebee can fly around. Amen. He's so fat, but he got little wings. But that little thing just flying and flitting all around. Amen. And they don't understand how it happens. They truly don't. But you know what? Our God, he just got them going around there. Praise the Lord. Just showing out. Praise the Lord. And we take that for granted sometimes, don't we? Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, and this ain't talking about baseball either. Not in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so for us to even catch a glimpse of God's greatness, we got to first understand that creation is an act that has never been duplicated. Amen. Because to truly create means to bring something into existence without the use of any materials. Now, somebody might say, well, a particular artist or a sculptor uh, creates a masterpiece when actually that artist or that sculpture, they use the wood and the cloth and the, the stone and the paints, and then he or she, they arranged or fashioned something into a beautiful piece of art uh, using the materials that were available to them. They did not create it. Amen. My friend, everything, known and unknown, uh, it was made by God. I say everything known and unknown, uh, it was created by God. Come on. God created all things. God even created the dust of the earth. The Bible says that God created man from the dust of the earth and then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became what? A living soul. Amen. Now from the side of man God took a rib and made a woman. I just lost half of you. Some of y'all just thinking of ribs. Somebody thinking about Big Frank's barbecue down the street here. Amen. But I ain't talking about Big Frank. I'm talking about Big Jesus. Come on. He's a great God. He pulled a rib from Adam, and he gave it to Eve, and he made a woman. But not only did our God create man, he became flesh so he could be the Savior of all of mankind. My friend, today, the greatest miracle of the ages is when God created God and became flesh. God took, a, uh, took on a robe of flesh. He became a man so that he could uh, redeem us uh, from sin in our lives. Praise the Lord. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the Precious blood of Jesus Christ as of lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus Christ today is our great deliverer. Psalm 70, uh, 37, 39 through 40 says, But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength and in time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. I hope today that somebody is encouraged with the word. I hope today that somebody knows that there is hope for you in Christ Jesus. Is anybody love the Lord today? Would you clap your hands? Come on, would you clap your hands to the Lord? Psalm 121, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord, 
and he heard me. Brother the Lauder, you just don't know. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what's in my past or the number of times that I have fallen. Come on. Nobody knows. Amen. Every one of us has got our sad, sad song. Every one of us has fallen. Is there anybody that's perfect in here? Come on. Is there any perfect person? If you're perfect, why don't you stand? Amen. Praise the Lord. Nobody stand. Praise God. Brother Anderson did that one time. I heard about, and hey, amen, I, I just had, I had to try it, see if we had any perfect people. Praise the Lord. Preacher called for, some, Brother Jordan called for somebody perfect to stand. Brother, Brother Anderson just stood right up, and he was the only perfect one in the church. Amen. Praise God. I don't believe there's no perfect person in the church. Amen. Thank God that he loves us, and he forgives us daily, 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 every day of the day. Today, I would guess probably the irony of the ages is, uh, on the one hand, God vehemently and strongly hates sin. And yet, on the other hand, and at the same time, he loves sinners with an unparalleled passion, and he wants you to be free today. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in here. Amen. I don't know who you are and what you came addicted to today. I feel the spirit of pornography in this house. I'm telling you what I feel. I'm just being old coach today. Praise God. I'm telling you the power of God is here today to deliver you from wickedness. The power of God here today can set you free from addiction. You don't have to leave out of here addicted to that mess anymore. Your mind can be changed today totally. Woo. Come on, all you. Come on, all of you. Come on. Oh, not me, Pastor. I've never been tempted in my life. I've been in church for 40 years and never been tempted, not once. You are a liar in Jesus' name. You are tempted every day of your life. Every day. Come on. I, uh, am I preaching today? Am I telling the truth? Not bad, not bad, praise God. We're tempted. You're tempted every day. You're going to fall sometimes, amen, but you got to keep getting up. You got to keep getting up. You got to keep fighting a good fight. Uh, amen. What happens uh, in, a, in a boxing ring? Uh, come on, man. Uh, when you get hit, uh, you get back up, uh, or at least you try to. Praise the Lord. Amen. I used to be in boxing. Praise the Lord. I, I'd never fought in my, my, in my life. Uh, and, uh, I was at the National Guard Armory. There was over a thousand people in this armory, and I was just a little spindly kid. I ain't never even fought, had a fight in my life, and I was just—I uh, was scared to death. And I walked up in that place, and my my stepdad, he was called Muscles. That's what they called him. He was big, brawny. They called him Muscles in the army. And uh, I seen him go over to the ring, and I seen him talking to the coach, and and he's pointing and he's pointing at me, and and I said, Mama, what's he want? And I said. She said, you better go over there. And I said, I think I will. And so I walked over there, and he said, you're fixing a fight. I said, what? And they, I had to put on another boy's mouthpiece and all that and, and, and everything. I, I mean, they just threw me up in that ring. I looked like Don Knotts up there trying to fight, you know. And, and I was so scared. I was, I, I was absolutely terrified. But that boy from Bunky, Louisiana, he come walking up to me all like he was all something. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I was putting on a show. And I hit that boy so hard, I knocked his mouthpiece out of his mouth the first time out of the ring. Amen. And I won the fight. Sometimes you just got to put on a show. Devil, you've had me long enough, and I ain't going to put up with it anymore. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm in this thing to win it. And you got to come out swinging with everything within you. Woo! Praise God. Greatly, in the Hebrew language, is mayod. Not mayo. Mayod means holy, speedily, diligently, exceedingly, fast, good, louder, and louder, mightily, quickly, utterly, very much. The depth of one's worship should somewhat be parallel to the object of their worship. In other words, a great God deserves great praise, meaning that there is no part 
of Jehovah's greatness that is not worthy of great praise. Amen. That means even though I cannot sing, praise the Lord, I can't even sing in a shower. I can't even get wet. The water goes back up when I start singing. I fly away. Whoops. Praise God. So I make a joyful noise in that shower anyway. Praise God. My wife might say, shut up in there. You sound like a vomiting seagull. Praise God. But I'm having a good time anyway. I'm worshiping the Lord. Some of, somebody needs to worship God. Somebody needs to sing unto the Lord today. <laughs> Woo! My, my, my. That means that no chorus is too loud. That means no orchestra is too large. No psalm is too lofty for praising the Lord of hosts. Amen. What I'm saying today is simple. Our beyond the ordinary God deserves beyond the ordinary praise. Hallelujah. Our ordinary God, our beyond the ordinary God. Amen. He deserves the best praise that you can give him. Amen. Sometimes when you don't feel like praising God, amen, there's been times I, I, in this body I just I don't feel like praising God. But I start thinking about how good he's been to me. I start thinking, I got my, my wife. I got my children are alive. My grandchildren are alive. Some of you lost children, but you're, you're going to see them again. Amen. That's how good he is. Amen. Even though they may have went on, you're going to see them again. Woo! I say you're going to see them again. We've got hope in this house today. That's why you see us here at New Life running and shouting and dancing with exuberant praise. Amen. Adam Clark's commentary says it this way. God should be praised according to his greatness. No common praise is suited to the nature and the dignity of a supreme God. So what is common praise? We often refer to the worship service as what? The preliminaries the preliminary part of the service. And my friend, I want you to know, there is nothing preliminary about worshiping God. Amen. When we gather here, it's to worship God with everything within us. If we come into this place and fail to praise God, then we have wasted our time. Praise to God is the most important thing that you can possibly do. If you're having a bad day, just begin to praise Him anyway. If you don't feel good, just begin to praise Him anyway. Begin to shout. Begin to dance. Begin to run. And then in just a moment, you're going to feel some relief in your life. Your spirit will be uplifted. No common praise. God's been good to you, you ought to praise him. I say, if God's been good to you, you ought to praise him. Woo! Somebody's going to get a hold of that in just a moment. I say, if God's been good to you, then you ought to praise him with everything within you. You should praise God without being prodded. You should praise God whether you're encouraged or not encouraged. Come on, let me remind you to praise the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. You see them right now? They're worshiping the Lord. Amen. They're worshiping the Lord as they should. Amen. The flower sways in the breeze. The trees sway in the breeze. God's people worship the Lord. Come on, let's just sway in the breeze of the Holy Ghost. Let's just love the Lord right now. Come on, worship God. Music, come on. Praise singers, come on. There is none like the Lord. Remain standing if you will. Praise the Lord. There is none like the Lord. And there should be no praises like his praises. Praises take on many forms today. We praise God every day in the beauty of holiness. In the beauty of holiness. Amen. There is nothing more beauty, beautiful than to see a godly man or woman 
Amen. Walking through the grocery store. Amen. They're godly and they're holy. And they're loving God and they're treating people good. We worship in holiness for we are a holy people. Amen. There is no such thing as a sexy saint. I've said it before. Just pure worship. Just pure godliness. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul admonishes the child of God. Present. Everybody say present. Present your body a living sacrifice. Living praise. Our holiness to God is peculiar in this ungodly world, isn't it? That means our very life uh, should be a living praise unto the Lord. Our praise should be emotional. Tears, happiness, joy, because you're a human being. You ever been to a football game? You know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like that. Come on. You go to a football game and your team wins. You shouldn't be going to a football game. But you go and when you used to go. Praise the Lord. Be up there weeping for joy because somebody caught a pigskin. <laughs> Feeling it. Praise God. For a stupid pigskin. But you want to come to church? For a defiled pig skin, you would act a fool. Paint yourself all blue. Shout. We got the fever. We're hot. We can't be stopped. Pom poms shaking and all that stuff. Can't even raise your hand, God. We'll be all tough. Stop right there. I told you I'm not a pillow talk preacher. I really am not. I can't stand weakness. Especially in a man. I put up with a little bit from a woman. Come on, don't take me wrong. But a man, I can't stand weakness. That ain't the way God made you. God made you to be a man, to take care of your family, to take care of your loved ones, to treat them right. So be a man. The Bible says David, he shouted, and he was a man of war. David killed him by the thousands. You didn't mess with David. Your praise should be emotional. It should be passionate. It should be participatory, and it should be powerful. Amen. And men, it should be full of strength. Come on. The psalmist David, he introduced us to at least nine types of participatory praise. I, I can see, I hear it right now. Some of y'all want to sit down. Amen. But we need to stand for just a little bit. Our God is worthy. Yeah. Not me, our God. Yeah. If I got to stand up here for an hour, amen, you can stand up for five minutes. Come on. Praise the Lord. Woo, my, my, my. I think God's beginning to deal with us about worship. See, I've been to Africa five times. I've been to Kenya and, uh, and Morocco and all over the place. And then people will walk to church 20, 30, 40 miles. They don't care if it's raining. They don't care if they don't, they got a loincloth on. Amen. That's their Sunday go to meet in loincloth. Amen. And they coming up here to worship God. Hallelujah. They're not praying, playing around. They don't care if they don't have another meal till tomorrow. Some of us still got Big Frank's ribs on our mind. We need to get that off our of mind, praise the Lord, and get God on our mind. But there's nine types of participatory praise. And three types involve our mouth. Number one, let them shout for joy and be glad. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Number two, sing unto the Lord. Not just praise singers, but everybody. Join in. Amen. Number three, publish your voice with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of his wondrous works. Are you thankful today? And if you are, begin to tell him right now and clap your hands to the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Three other types of praise. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Three other types of praise, uh, participatory, uh, are your hands. Uh, come on, play skillfully. Praise the Lord. Uh, but, Pastor, I can't play an instrument. Uh, then play the handbarine. Uh, come on. Uh, I say play the handbarine. Uh, woo! Uh, 
That's about all I'm good at. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Woo! Come on, use your musical instrument right now. And clap your hands unto the Lord. Sing and make music to you. Woo, to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My hand just, look at that. It just went into spasms. Praise the Lord. And then we lift up our spasm and fingers to the Lord. Hallelujah. I need some magnesium. Woo, praise the Lord. Number three. There's three more. Involves the whole body. Number one, let them praise his name in the dance. That's all I know do how to do is the, the two-step boogie. Amen. Whatever you know how to do, do it. Amen. I don't care. You can do the Smurf up here. I don't care what you do. But worship God. Whatever it is you got to do, then you throw it down, brother. You let it rip. Do it for God. Do it for God. Somebody say, well, I can't dance when I'm in the church. Yeah, you can. You can dance all day long. Woo! Just don't do no sexy dance. Don't be doing none of this. Can't touch this. Boom, boom, boom. We don't want none of that. Kneel before the Lord, our maker. Bow down before the Lord. But pastor, it's not in my nature. I'm so sick of hearing that. I, you know I'm a quiet person. You know. Yeah, I know who you are. Amen. I know if Elon Musk walked in here with his 240 billion with a B. And I know if Jeff Zucker, whatever his name is from Facebook, walked in here with his 174 billion. And I know, if I know anything, if both of them walked up to you and said, brother, we have been thinking about it and we're gonna give you $370 billion today. I bet your big toe would start shaking right there, amen. You start doing something, amen. You'd begin to feel something, wouldn't you? Praise the Lord, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? You'd be, oh, oh, yes! You'd be acting a fool. You'd be calling up your boss saying, I won't be coming in tomorrow. See ya. Talk to the hand because I you ain't talking to me no more. You'd be so excited. Well, let me tell you something. God's done more for you than Elon Musk or Jeff Zuckerberg has ever done in all of your life. We got streets of gold to walk on. We got heaven to live for. Woo! I had to begin to sing. Come on, let's worship God in this house today. I wonder if somebody would come on up here. I got a praise and I got a praise. Come on, I got a praise. I got a praise. 